A peaceful afternoon in the middle of uncharted Pacific waters has been interrupted by a sudden caterwauling commotion as a plane unceremoniously plunges into the ocean. This catastrophe will set the stage for our discussion of a bacteria previously thought to be harmless, Moraxella catarallis. The ruckus has caused a generally shy moray eel with a striking cat face and sunny disposition, Sketchy's recurring symbol for Moraxella catarallis, to peek out of his cat cave. Coincidentally, M. catarallis is also catalase positive and has a real thing for Broadway musicals. Meow. Oh dear, looks like the wreckage has been engulfed in flames. As with previous sketchy lessons, this red glow should highlight the fact that Moraxella catarallis is gram-negative. A gram-negative diplococcus, that is. The nose of the plane is still intact, though, and looks rather... well, nose-like. A perfect home for our little cat-faced friend. This should serve as a reminder that M. catarallis generally takes up residence in the nasopharynx. It's a uniquely human bug, and nasal colonization is very common in children. Ooh hoo hoo hoo! Forget noses, check out that bit of blue bling floating down. This stunner of a blue gem ring means that Moraxella catarallis is oxidase positive. Hmm. It appears that this bellows fish, symbolizing that M. catarallis is an aerobe, may be interested in expanding his jewelry collection. He also looks like he's using up a lot of oxygen in his chase after the ring. Look at all those bubbles around him. Looks like our aerobic fine fishy friend is about to get slimed by those rocks covered in slippery algae as he swims by. That algae, incidentally, represents the fact that M. catarallis is able to form a biofilm which sometimes helps it resist our antibiotics. An additional virulence factor of M. catarallis is seen here in the wreckage of the crash. A broken gyroscope that looks an awful lot like the broken beta-lactam ring planet, Sketchy's recurring symbol for the production of beta-lactamase. This beta-lactamase production can help other lurking pathogens dodge the immune system as well. In fact, Morexella catarallis is commonly found hanging out with H flu and strep pneumo. I like to think that when you find them in a culture, they're doing it for the culture. Now, over here, you can see a stray plane wheel sliding through the water like a hockey puck. This is perhaps a low yield, but fairly interesting fact. Morexella catarallis has a positive hockey puck sign. This means that the colonies slide easy across the agar like a hockey puck on ice, a trait that is totally unique to M. catarallis. I know, you're probably asking, why didn't we just make the symbol a hockey puck? Storyline, people! We at Sketchy are renowned for our realistic storylines. A hockey puck in the middle of the ocean? It's simply preposterous! Speaking of realistic, looks like the pilot ejected from the plane and is swimming to safety. And... If she looks really familiar, you're not imagining it, it's Amelia Earhart herself, symbolizing otitis media, of course, reminding us that Moraxella catarallis is a common cause of otitis media in kids. Recall that many children are colonized already, so it's really just a hop, or symbolic swim, if you will, through the eustachian tube and into that middle ear. And good thing Amelia exited when she did, because the nose of that plane is looking like it's starting to burn. It's bright red and leaking some gross, gunky stuff. Either that, or it has a sudden case of bacterial sinusitis, which is commonly caused by Morax alicateralis. Note that we are specifically talking about bacterial causes, as most cases of sinusitis are viral in nature. Another friendly onlooker has popped by for a look. It's a blue bloater fish. Sketchy's recurring symbol for COPD. Acute COPD exacerbations and bronchopneumonia in those with COPD can be caused by M. catarallis as this population is unfortunately frequently colonized. So who will swim forward and provide aid or treatment to our imperiled pilot? It appears the cephalopod swimming by may be just the answer. This cephalopod represents cephalosporins, which are an effective treatment for this pesky bug. I mean, cat-faced eel. Other effective treatments include amoxicillin clavulinate, symbolized here as this lethal combination of a box of ammo 
and clarinet harpoon falling out of the cargo hold. Let's just doggy paddle out of the way of those things. Oh, what, what is, what is that smell? Must be those rotting sofa eggs over there. Ooh, whew. they sure are a potent representation of trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, TMP SMX, another antibiotic used to treat M. catarrhalis. Let's uh, swim over to more fragrant waters. Ah, here are some anemones shaped like flowers, which symbolize fluoroquinolones, to which M. catarrhalis is also sensitive. Uh, for a previously overlooked bacteria, Moraxella catarrhalis has shown us that it can really pack a punch and should be considered in a variety of conditions and unsolved aeronautical mysteries. Before we catch up with Miss Earhurt, let's do a quick review. Moraxella catarrhalis is a gram-negative, catalase-positive diplococcus that can colonize the nasopharynx. It's an oxidase-positive aerobe that forms a biofilm, produces beta-lactamase, and has a positive hockey puck sign. Moraxella catarrhalis is a common cause of bacterial otitis media in kids, bacterial sinusitis, and COPD exacerbations. Treatments for M. catarrhalis include cephalosporins, abaxacillin clavulinate, TMP-SMX, and fluoroquinolones. Huh. Hey, Amelia! Um, Amelia! Miss Earhurt? I'm such a big fan. Maybe she can't hear me with her hurt ear. No, no, don't, don't swim away. Everyone's going to think you're missing. <laughs>